People in my congregation always took to debate about the greatest miracle. Everybody always had a different answer. For me, though, the greatest miracle? The power of life over death. Resurrection. Puts a mighty hurt on the brain when you realize what a person can do when they believe in something. You just gotta hope that what you believe is worth it. Worth what you're willing to do. What you're willing to lose. There's no room in heaven or hell for monsters like us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What was the last person that said those words brought a man back from the dead? You sure you want to be standing next to that son bitch when you're speaking him? My name is John Gibson. I'm the uh, director and producer for Revelation Trail. Revelation Trail is a character-based Western horror film uh, set in the 1880s, and we're specifically following two characters as they deal with that new situation in their lives. The two characters that the story focuses on is a preacher um, who in the, uh, the I guess uh, an homage to some of the old Clint Eastwood westerns, um, we never actually give him a name, he's really just known by his profession, but follows a preacher um, and then also um, a marshal of a small town, uh, Marshall Edwards, um, and it's their story as their basically dealing with this changing frontier. So we try to pull in that element of the Western, which, you know, the changing frontier, how it impacts our lives or how it impacts the, the lives of our characters. It just so happens our changing frontier is not um, mass industrialization. Uh, it's the undead rising. We did this. We almost got away. We almost us, got away. Tell us what happened. It's just a tough to stick. I don't want money or food or nothing. They just, they just beat him all over like they just tried to eat him. Oh, God. So you've got one man who's very grounded in faith, and how does this situation impact how he sees his role? And you've got one man who's grounded in the law. What good is the law when the thing that you're trying to enact the law with, or, or you know, if, if you're a zombie and I'm trying to say, stop, don't kill somebody, that's against the law, that's pointless. You know, likewise, if you're in a situation where the gun and survival is what really kind of helps um, keep society alive, the law, there's new definitions of the law and what is right and what it's wrong. Why? Why did because you? it had to be done. It had to be done? He was a human being. As soon as he saw his son's blood on that tarp, there was no difference between him and what's out there. He'd have killed both of us if he had the chance. I did what I had to do. We're, we're genre blending. So people, you know, there's that part of me that's like, oh, we're going to cater to the zombie fans. We're also going to cater to the Western fans. You know, you're going to have kind of the best of both worlds. But at the same time, when you start doing that, those audiences are going to expect certain things. But one of the things we were very specific about early on is making the zombies feel as real as possible. So we don't always have putrid blue or green flesh or something like that. I mean, it's a lot more dirt, blood, grit, things like that. I mean, it looks like it could be a real person, and that's what's kind of frightening about it. Um, so one thing that I hope zombie fans take away from this whenever they see it um, is that, you know, obviously they're going to be comparing our zombies to other zombies, but one thing I hope they can take away from it is that it actually looks like that could be a real person. Seeing that you can do a movie that's a genre blender like this, you can 
pay respect to the original genres that you're pulling from, but that when it comes to zombies, zombies don't have to be the main focus. You can still do a very good film that has zombies in it, but focus on characters. You can focus on the story. I mean, let's face it, there are a lot of B-movie, B-horror movie zombie, zombie films out there that are just, let's throw blood on people and stuff like that, and it's all about people eating each other. And it's not about what the other characters are actually. And, and I think as a storyteller, I care more about what the other characters are doing than people eating each other. Uh, my aspirations for this film, highest aspiration, I want to be on the sci-fi channel. I really want to be on the sci-fi channel. I mean, come on, if Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus can get on there, surely Revelation Trail can get on there. That's up there. The, the biggest thing, though, is I hope that when we're done, we have a film that people walk away saying, that was a really good story. They don't necessarily have to say, that was a really good zombie film, or that was a really good Western. I hope people come away and they say, that was a really good story. That was a really good overall production. Um, that we're able to pull the best of both and walk away with a great story. And I think so far with what, what I've seen from this crew and the cast uh, and with some of the dailies and things that are being edited, I feel really good about that goal. Um, and and I, I hope that when people see it, they, they don't think of it as a B horror film or just an indie production. I, I hope they look at it and say it. And, and I've, often had, I've oftentimes had to tell myself, we're making a real movie. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where that sinks in. And I hope that, I hope when people see this, they say, damn, that's, that's a real movie that a, this crew has been working on for, in some cases, five years. But if you're interested in filmmaking production, um, don't give up if you're really passionate about something. Um, because I see a lot of people who are like, oh, I can't wait to be a filmmaker. I want to be a filmmaker. This is going to be great. And at the first sign of challenge, they're like, oh, this is really difficult. I don't want to do it. If you're passionate about it, you'll find a way. Um, and, and life's going to suck at times. Just, uh, you know, adapt. And that's a downer end on. We'll stop right there. <laughs> Just please, will you please just use the quote, life is going to suck sometimes. Have we done zombies in space? Have we gotten to that point yet? No, I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, zombies are here to stay. Um, and I think that with The Walking Dead, we're, I'm, I, I'm waiting for the next zombie series. I mean, I really do. I don't think, they're, I don't think it's just a fad where they're going to lose their popularity. I think what it's going to come down to, though, is uh, the zombie, with it being here to stay, we as writers, we as um, you know, producers, filmmakers, have to treat that as one more element to work in a story. And what does working the zombie into our story, what's it say about the story we're trying to tell, if that makes sense? Like I said, in our case, the zombie simply represented the changing frontier. Um, it simply represented a, a force that people are having to deal with that as a, as a catalyst for all the change in their lives. It just so happens it's a catalyst that eats you. you know? And so I think that as long as people can continue to think of reverent ways to work in zombies and good storytelling ways to work in zombies, I think they're, they're here to stay. I think we're gonna see some really, really cool stuff. Um, I think we're gonna still get our fair share of zombie crap out there. But I think that Different modes of stories, zombies will always be worked in, you know, and um, I don't know, I'm excited. Of course, for the real future, let's face it, 2012, 2013, that's a zombie apocalypse. I'm ready. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>